Budapest is a wonderful city. St. Stephen's Basilica and the Fisherman's Bastion are must-visit landmarks either side of the Danube. There's bars, restaurants, nightlife, beautiful scenery, and 12 miles northeast there's a Formula 1 circuit which we'll be talking about today. The Hungarian Grand Prix was either a good race or a bad one depending on who you ask, but it was a day of typical dominance from Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton, who set the fastest lap of the race on the final tour of the Hungarian circuit. But you could be forgiven for expecting a more concerted Red Bull challenge, as the Milton Keynes outfit has been historically good around the low-speed, high-downforce circuits on the F1 calendar. If anything, Red Bull really struggled in qualifying trim, and although race pace is a lot more typical of what we'd expect from the team, it seems that the RB16 is quite a skittish machine. Even on the way to the grid, Max Verstappen clunked his car into the wall, and his mechanics had to fix his front-left suspension in just 20 minutes and against all the odds, it managed to do so. So today let's take a look at Red Bull's upgrades so far in 2020, including the ones that the team has rolled back on as it still tries to understand its car. In 2020, Red Bull has retained its high rake aero concept, and has tightened up its bodywork even further to minimise the overall drag that it produces. The side pods in particular are rather small, thanks to the packaging allowed by the Honda Power Unit. To do that, the team instead opts to position some of its radiators in the area above the air intake, meaning that the side pod radiators can be a little smaller. The engine cover is a little bit larger to cover that, but it's still able to transition to a smaller shark fin element. For this year, Red Bull's also opted to go with a thinner nose, allowing the team to make use of the cape design pioneered by Mercedes to boost the car's interplay with the front wing. For the first Austria round, it redefined that nose, shifting the mounting pillars further inwards to create rounder nostrils for the air to bleed through, cleaning up the airflow underneath. But Red Bull couldn't seem to get the best out of the nose, and reverted to the original spec for the second Red Bull ring race as a result. For that second race, the team trialled a new rear wing end plate design too, influenced by the design Haas introduced in 2019, which features a collection of curved slots to assist with the airflow expansion at the rear of the car. But yet again, Red Bull didn't seem to be too sure on which was the best design to carry forward, and spent hungry practice running the two specifications back to back. As it happened, Verstappen ran the newer design in the race, while Albon retained the old end plates, and the team will have to use part of the two-week break to Silverstone, assessing which concept actually worked best. For Hungary, Red Bull also bolted on its high downforce wings, aiming to grasp a little bit more performance in the slower corners. In circuits like the Hungaroring, as well as Singapore and Monaco, opting for the barn door size rear wing gives a higher level of downforce, but its increased frontal area also increases the overall drag produced. These circuits however have few areas where top speed comes into play, and so aerodynamicists don't have to trade off between drag and downforce quite as much. However, with both Monaco and Singapore set to be off the calendar in the pandemic hit 2020 season, this means that the highest downforce setup might end up being a hungry one-off. The leading edge of Red Bull's rear wing main plane is raised, allowing the team to run a much larger camber angle to the wing to also add downforce, albeit without compromising too much in further extending the frontal area. Doing that then, it's important to keep the airflow attached to the main plane to ensure that the wing remains effective. During testing phases, aerodynamicists test a range of wing angles and aerofoil profiles in order to see what works across all the conditions an F1 car faces, and Red Bull clearly seems to have got the best of it. But on a side note, amid the controversy that Racing Point faces, having produced a facsimile of last year's Mercedes, it's interesting to note that the Alpha Tauri team, Red Bull's junior outfit, features many design hallmarks of last year's RB15. Rebranded from the Toro Rosso team to advertise Red Bull's new clothing range, the Alpha Tauri AT01 also features the slim side pods and larger engine cover to package the Honda Power Unit. Alpha Tauri also brings in non-listed parts from Red Bull, and uses its 2019 suspension package and rear end to reduce the amount of parts that the team produces itself. On the front suspension this is particularly noticeable, using the multi-link upper wishbone that Red Bull trialled last year. 
Contrast that with Red Bull's 2020 suspension, where the top wishbone is once more conjoined, but now features a split lower wishbone. These designs offer variation in the setup options that teams have available, and seem to be in an effort to bring the front lower down to the ground during cornering to bolster the overall downforce. Alpha Tauri has, in its new white and navy paint scheme, had a solid start to 2020, seemingly slap bang in the middle of the midfield. Hungary, however, was difficult. Pierre Gasly spent the weekend battling power unit problems en route to retirement, while Daniel Kvyat finished 12th. But with a gap until Silverstone, Red Bull has grounds to make up on Mercedes. And first of all, it must provide its two drivers with a little bit more confidence behind the wheel.